This movie is about possibly the cruelest case of identity theft imaginable. This is 2018's The Wrong Daughter. I'm Jay Harang, I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. We start by meeting sex positive Samantha, who's been to watch a band and gone home with the guitarist. After they finished, he's like, okay, you've had your 15 minutes. She's like, what? You told me you loved me. I need some alone time. Can I get my shirt back? <laughs> She's not happy about that, so batters him with his own guitar. Samantha lives at this orphanage with her roommate Danica, who Samantha calls Nick Knack, and she needs to sneak back in before Ms. Hansen finds out she snuck out. But oh no. The front door's open, you know. Ms. Hansen has had enough of Samantha's behavior, and as she's 18, she kicks her out of the orphanage. Out. Now. Cut to this couple, Kate and Joe Whitman. Kate's pregnant and they're really excited about having a baby, but oh no. The embryo is detached from the cervical wall. Uh-oh. At the orphanage, Samantha's packing up her things and tells Nick Knack that Ms. Hansen wants to see her so she can steal her laptop. Back at the Whitman house, Joe tells Kate that he thinks he's found Danica, the girl who Kate put up for adoption 18 years ago on Facebook, even though there are no photos on her profile. Maybe she's not a selfie addict like the rest of America. Why didn't the Martins change her name after they adopted her? That's right, the daughter Kate thought had been raised by another family has been in the care system for 18 years. Poor thing. Joe's like, I think you should reach out to her. This could be a disaster. Yes. Yeah, she's going to do it anyway. Oh. But oh no, Kate's message has gone to Samantha because she stole Danica's laptop. Could this get any more perfect? That's right, Samantha is going to pretend to be Danica and go to meet Kate at a restaurant, the Kettle Black Bistro. But hang on, the real Danica has come to the library to get her laptop back. Sam? Nick, What? That's right, somehow pushing a few books into Danica's face has knocked her out. Right. So Samantha drags her unconscious body into this closet and locks the door. Samantha arrives at Kettle Black Bistro and really hits it off with Kate, who has no idea that Samantha isn't the real Danica. Kate's like, why didn't the Martins adopt you? And Samantha's like, oh, because I had a heart condition, but it's fine now. Later at dinner, Samantha tells Kate and Joe that she ran away from the orphanage and now she's homeless. So they ask her to move in. Oh, and I'll need the information for the foster home. That might be a problem as the police have found the real Danica in a closet at the library and returned turned her to Ms. Hansen, who's just bought Danica a new laptop. So Samantha pays this homeless woman to pretend to be Ms. Hansen. Safe Harbor, this is Ms. Hansen. I'm calling in regards to Danica Tyrell. Yeah, you'll have to, you'll need to fill out a few forms. Oh, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Kate promised she'd take Samantha shopping today, but she's tied up at work. Samantha has decided that Kate's best friend and colleague, Melissa, is the reason why this shopping trip isn't happening. So now she hates her. She goes out to see Joe, who's working on this special garden. It's Melissa's pet project, and the raccoons have ruined it overnight. When Kate gets home, Samantha's in a mood because she said she'd take her shopping, and she didn't. Don't say things if you don't mean them. Ooh. Kate tells Joe she thinks there might be something wrong with Danica, but he's like, she's probably just having a bad day, and then they bang. The next morning, Samantha apologizes for being weird and says she really wants to go and spend a night with Kate at her cabin in the woods. Kate's like, yeah, okay, we'll do that. Later at Kettle Black Bistro, Samantha brings Kate a necklace and Kate and Melissa really like it. I was thinking we could go to the cabin this weekend. Yeah, she seems to really want to go to that cabin. But Kate's like, we can't really because we have a barbecue on Saturday. Samantha's like, what about after that? But Melissa says that's not going to work because there's no cell service up at the cabin and something may come up to do with Kettle Black. Come on, please. One night won't hurt. I will talk to Joseph tonight. Later, Samantha plants the necklace she gave Kate in Melissa's bag to make it look like she's trying to steal it. Wait a minute. I have no idea how that got there, Kate, I swear. Kate puts it down to an accident, but Melissa's pretty sure Samantha planted it. When Kate and Samantha get home, they meet Melissa's boyfriend, Ivan, who lives next door. This is Ivan, Melissa's boyfriend. He lives in the house right behind us. <laughs> No, nothing like that actually happens, but it's what I was expecting. Later, Samantha and Kate are having a really nice time watching TV and eating popcorn, yeah. The doorbell rings and Samantha gets it. Oh, look, it's Melissa with some flowers. Uh, we're busy. 
Then Kate comes over and she's like, oh, hi, Melissa. Thanks. These are really nice. This surprise visit hasn't gone down well with Samantha at all. So when Kate goes to bed, she goes outside and destroys Melissa's garden. But oh no, Ivan's awake. He sees all this from an upstairs window and records it on his phone. Really? You're a grown man and she's a small 18-year-old girl. Grow up. Anyway, the next day, Danica is sat in a park with her new laptop and sees a message from Melissa on Facebook. She assumes it must be a mistake because she doesn't know anyone called Melissa. But then she clicks on her profile and sees that Samantha is posing as her. Back at the Whitmans, they're preparing for the barbecue when Ivan comes over. He's like, right, what was that about last night? And Samantha's like, please don't tell anyone. I'm begging you. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Kate's seen the garden. Luckily, they assume it was the raccoons again. Well, that makes sense. Later at the barbecue, Ivan shows Melissa the video. See, I told you there was something wrong with her. Ivan convinces Melissa not to tell Kate until they've given Samantha a chance to explain herself. So later, she goes on to Ivan's house to explain. You gonna explain what happened in the garden? I'm sorry. And that's good enough for Ivan, so he agrees to delete the video. And now everything's fine. Or is it? <laughs> Normally, you'd expect someone to just get up immediately after falling down the stairs, maybe a broken bone if they'd been really unlucky and landed awkwardly. But this is a Lifetime movie, and stairs are lethal, remember? So he's dead. Really? Yes. So Samantha grabs his phone and goes back to the Whitmans as if nothing's happened. She's like, Joe, what are you up to? And he's like, oh, I'm just working on some emails. Then she spots he has an email from Melissa with a video attached. She's like, what's that video from Melissa? And Joe's like, oh, it must be some strange video like a crazy monkey riding backwards on a pig or something like that. Excuse me? And no, I haven't made that up. Probably like some strange video like a crazy monkey riding backwards on a pig. Ridiculous, but not as ridiculous as what happens next. Joe's like, let's watch it together. Wait, why don't we watch it on the big screen? Yeah, great idea. All right, big screen it is. <laughs> I mean, I don't know where to start with that, but incredibly, he's not dead. Good. What happened? You tripped on the rug and you hurt your head. Melissa has received a message from the real Danica telling her the person she thinks is her is actually a schizophrenic former roommate, Samantha, who's wanted by the police. So now the cat's out of the bag. But how's Melissa going to tell Kate? They're going to the cabin where there's no cell reception. Oh, no. Melissa goes over to Ivan's house to see him, but he's dead, remember? So the police are there. When they try and keep her away from the scene, she assaults an officer. So she's arrested and thrown in jail. The next day at the orphanage, Danica shows Ms. Hanson what Samantha's been up to. Who are these people? The woman on the right? Her name is Kate? Why? Ms. Hansen's like, that's your mum. Meanwhile in jail, Melissa has convinced the police to send someone to the cabin. And here he is. Kate has gone to get groceries and Joe is sleeping. So Samantha approaches him. Your name wouldn't happen to be Samantha Brown, would it? She's like, no, I'm Danica Whitman. He's like, can I see some ID? And she's like, yeah, it's inside. Why don't you come in? Oh. Officer Raymond, have you reached the cabin yet? Just got word from County. There's an APB out on Samantha Brown. Proceed with caution. Okay, will do. <laughs> so he's dead. And there's no way Samantha can cover this up, even though Joe's somehow slept through all of that. So she gets in the police car and drives off. Meanwhile, at the grocery store car park, where there's cell service, Kate gets a call from the orphanage. Hello? Is this Catherine Whitman? Yes. This is Danica. Is this some kind of joke? It's not a joke. Would it not have made more sense for Ms. Hansen to call? Yeah. Anyway, Kate's like, I don't have time for this, and drives back to the cabin, where she finds a dead police officer on the porch. She goes in and tells Joe what she now knows is really going on, drives him home, and goes to the orphanage to see her real daughter. When she gets there, Ms. Hansen shows her to Danica's room. And oh no, she's not there, but Samantha's bag is. And oh no, Samantha's on the roof holding a knife to Danica's throat. Kate tries to talk Samantha down by bringing up happier times. Do, do you remember our barbecue? Yeah, the barbecue, the one where Ivan showed Melissa the video so you went round his house and killed him. How we worked on that garden together. And then you destroyed it. And our, our trip to the, 
the cabin? Yeah, you know, the one where you stabbed the police officer to death. You should remember that trip, really, as it only finished a few hours ago. True. So Samantha drops the knife and the police come over and take her away. Six months later at Kettle Black Bistro, Kate is signing the adoption papers for Danica. So now they're a real family. And oh, look, Kate's pregnant. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Whitmans. <laughs> and that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. And please consider joining my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you.